Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is just one of our, well, it can be a daily chore. It depends on how the weather's doing. We went from some warm temperatures to cold and snow again to warm, and here we are in cold and snow again. When you have the uh, off grid lifestyle and you're making your own energy, solar panels don't make a thing when there's snow on them. So, gotta keep those cleaned off. But it got me thinking. We, um, did a video a few, a couple months ago. We kind of did a deep dive on why we chose the appliances that we chose. We went with all DC powered appliances. Mainly that's our refrigerator and our uh, freezer, chest freezer. And we did in that video because we left for 10 days. It was the middle of October, so you're not gonna get snow here in our area. But we did have quite a bit of cloud and rain, but just uh, being able to run the, just those, being able to shut the inverter off, they were just fine when we came back. In fact, we had just as much power in our batteries when we got back as when we left. But we're planning another trip here. We're gonna be going down to Mexico at the end of January to visit some friends. And I thought, thinking, okay, yeah, that's fine. We did make some solar oil gone in October, but into January? Uh, we could clean the solar panels off right before we leave. And who knows, before we ever take off from the airport, they could be covered with snow again. And then we're making absolutely zero power while we're gone. What's that refrigerator gonna be like when we get back? You got some options. You could um, just shut everything down, shut your whole place down and empty out your refrigerator. That's one thing, but we're not gonna empty out a 14 cubic foot chest freezer with all the meat and everything we have stocked in there. You could have somebody come and stay and babysit or have people stop by. I wanted to do a little test. So last week we left for the UP. We had to do it overnight up in the UP. So I thought, well, let's simulate this. I made sure our batteries were at 100% when we left. And then I shut off the switch to the solar panels. So there's absolutely no solar coming in whatsoever. And we were gone um, for a little over a day. So I just took from 100% and I'll show you what we had when we got back and we'll see just how long this place would uh, stay alive should we leave and the panels be covered completely by snow. Just wanna give you some uh, basic facts and data on that again. You can decide for yourself. It's good to have information, so stay tuned. So we're in our back shed here and we had to run up to the UP to take care of some stuff last week. We were gonna be gone overnight. So what I did was make sure that our batteries here were up to 100% charge when we left. And then if you've seen the other video, if not, these lines here, this is where it comes in from the solar panels. Always a good idea to put one of these switches on, but what I did to simulate the panels being totally covered with snow while we were gone, I shut those off. So now we have zero solar coming into the system. So the only thing that's uh, keeping it alive is what's in the batteries. So I know we were gonna be gone for about a day, so I made sure it was at 100%. And we shut those off and left, and we'll see what we had when we came back. All right, next, we're gonna go over this system that we have in place. We have a 12 volt system, and we have four 100 amp hour batteries. And we do our math on that of volts times amps equal watts. So we have 4,800 watts of stored power. Next, we are at 100% capacity when we left. We were gone for 30 hours, or you could say, one and a quarter days, and we were at 90% capacity when we returned. So continue on with our math from that, we used 10% of our stored battery capacity, which equals 480 watts that we used while we were gone. You take the 480 watts divided by the 30 hours that we were gone with the system shut off, and we used 16 watts per hour. So what was running during that time was our 10 cubic foot refrigerator, freezer that's in the house and our 14 cubic foot chest freezer that's on the outside of the house. Both of those are run on a DC system. So basically if we left our place which is the refrigerator and the freezer they're the only things taking power out of the system. If we left at 100% capacity and didn't have any solar power put in through that time we would have 12.5 days till 0% capacity. You know we never want to draw our pad batteries down that far but we should be able to leave for 10 days in the winter time and have good reasonable uh, expectations that everything's gonna be fine when we get back. So as we do a comparison on appliances, 
I looked up online, uh, typical AC fridge, same size, 10 cubic foot, and look at the energy guide rating. They vary a little bit, but for round numbers, it's about 300 kilowatts of power per year. So that'll come out to about 300,000 watts of power per year. You divide that by 365 days in the year, and that equals down to 821 watts of power usage per day. So that gives you an average of 34 watts of usage per hour, and that was uh, the refrigerator only. So in the ending, what's really a takeaway from this? Your DC appliances are going to average a fair amount more money per unit than what you can buy just from a big box store of regular AC appliances. And that's, uh, that's up for everybody to decide which way they want to go. I just want to put a little uh, factual information out there of what we discovered. And one thing we've really uh, appreciated about the way we set up our system also, now that I have the remote switch set up inside the cabin, and we find ourselves turning that inverter off quite a bit, especially at night. We have some DC outlets where we can plug in USB ports and run a small fan, charge phones overnight. All our lights are 12 volt lights. Appliances are all 12 volt appliances. So unless we need to use an outlet for something or if we need to charge up the well, which is run on the AC power. We don't leave that inverter on at all. Our inverter itself uses 15 watts an hour on average. And you look online and they'll tell you inverters will run 15 to 50 watts of usage per hour just in idle mode. So in the overall of it, you can save yourselves quite a bit of power by not having to use the AC power using the inverter. This is just another way you can set up your system. Everybody has to kind of figure out what they want. We like it because it gives us the freedom to come and go as we please with relative confidence that everything's gonna be fine when we get back. I hope you found this information useful and just do the research yourself. But I just want to provide some real facts and numbers for you all.